All right, everyone, welcome back. Well, we are talking about uniform circular motion today. So introducing that, so I hope you guys are excited. All right, so uniform circular motion, motion where an object is moving with constant speed in a circular motion or circular pattern. A good example of this is a Ferris wheel. Uh, let's see, maybe swinging a ball in a circle. Uh, so far, we've only talked about objects that are either not moving or moving in a straight line. So this chapter deals with objects that move in a circular pattern. All right, so let's continue with that. So for this part of it, we're going to be primarily talking about period and frequency. So period is the time it takes for an object to make one complete revolution. So let's say this, is, um, this goes by a minute. So this long hand right here. So if this is a stopwatch that tests for one minute, how long will it take this to go all the way around? Uh, the answer would be one minute. So that means that would be the period of this long handle right here. That would be one minute. So however something takes to go all the way around, for example, this Ferris wheel, if it takes, let's say, three minutes to go all the way around, its period would be three minutes. Okay? So period is equal to the amount of time something takes divided by the number of cycles. Okay? So if it takes three minutes to go around one time, that means the period is equal to three minutes. Okay? So here's the formula. Period is equal to time divided by the number of cycles. If you want to find the number of cycles, you could do time divided by the period. If you want to find the time, you could do period divide, uh, times the number of cycles. Maybe it seems a little weird, but as we do practice problems, it should be simple. Okay, so a track star is running a race. She runs four laps in 280 uh, seconds. What is her period? So again, let's look at the formula here. We're looking for a period. And we know a period is equal to time divided by the number of cycles. Okay, so I'm going to use that formula. T equals T divided by N. Okay, so the time it takes is 280 seconds. And the number of cycles is 4 laps. So what does this equal? I'm going to put this into my calculator. 280 divided by 4. And we get period is equal to 70 seconds. What does this mean? It takes her 70 seconds to go around one time. Okay. Okay, moving on. Charlie runs a lap uh, around the track in 80 seconds. Cindy runs four laps around the track in 320 seconds. Which person has a larger period of motion? Okay, so we know the period of Charlie is equal to 80 seconds. But we don't exactly know what the period of Cindy is. But we can find well, find out what that is. So that's going to be 320 seconds divided by the 4 laps. So if I did that, 320 divided by 4, I see that Cindy also has a period of 80 seconds. So both have the same period. Okay. Uh, example number 2. Uh, a merry-go-round takes 7.5 seconds to go all the way around. How long will it take the merry-go-round to go around 12 times? Okay, so we know period is equal to the time divided by the number of cycles. But this time we're looking for uh, how long it will take. So this time we're looking for the time. So we're going to use the formula time is equal to uh, the period times the number of times it goes. So let's see, the period is 7.5 seconds. That's how long it takes to go all the way around. And the number of times it's going around is 12. So I'm going to put that into my calculator. 12 times 7.5. That's equal to 90 seconds. And that should make sense. Uh, over here, we have the same formula here. If you memorized it or copied it down. So we're just using that formula there. Uh, a merry-go-round takes 7.5 seconds to go all the way around. In one minute, how many times will the merry-go-round have gone all the way around? So again, if we use the formula, period is equal to time divided by number. 
This time we're looking for how many times will the mirror go, go around. So we're looking for the number, the cycle. So we, if we memorize it or we can manipulate the formula, number of cycles is equal to the time it takes divided by the period. So let's do that. The time it takes is one minute. But I'm going to put 60 seconds because period is also in seconds, which is 7.5. So let's figure that out. 60 divided by 7.5, and we get eight times. So merry-go-round goes around eight times in that one minute. Okay. Person number one spins a yo-yo in a circle, making a full revolution in 0 0.3 seconds. Person number two spins a yo-yo, makes a full revolution in 0 0.2 seconds. If both of these people spin the yo-yo like this for one minute, which person would have spun the yo-yo for more times? Okay, so how we're doing this uh, is we have a yo-yo here. And it's going to spin around in a circle. I think if I remember from fourth grade, this is called around the world. And it's going to, for person number one, it's going to take 0 0.3 seconds to go all the way around. Uh, person number two, I'll draw it over here. Uh, go all the way around, around the world, go 0 0.2 seconds. So if they both do it for one minute, so this 60 seconds and 60 seconds, which person would have spun the yo-yo for more times? I think intuitively you would know it's person number two and that's correct. It, it takes, uh, if they could do it in 0.2 seconds and first person can only do it in 0.3 seconds, they could spin it more times. But if you want to check the math, uh, again, we can do the number of cycles is equal to the time, 60 divided by 0 0.3, which is 0 0.3, and we just do 60 divided by 0 0.3, oops, 60 divided by 0 0.3, and we get 200 times, or the one for person number two, we could do 60 divided by 0 0.2, And we get 300 times. Okay, so in one minute, that's how much that happens. And we can verify that person number two is the one that did more. Okay, moving on. Okay, so let's look at this example. Person number one is able to spin a yo yo and make a full revolution in 0 0.3 seconds. Person number two is able to spin a yo yo and make a full revolution in 0 0.2 seconds. If person number one does this for 30 seconds and person number two does this for 20 seconds, which person would have made more revolutions? So for this time, we are going to have to do the math. Uh, we should know by now that the number of time cycles it makes is divided by the time, uh, time divided by the period. So we can use that to figure this out. So for person number one, the number of cycles is equal to the time, which is 30 seconds, divided by 0.3. And then we put that in the calculator and we get 100 times. Okay. And for person number two, number of cycles is equal to 20 seconds divided by 0.2. Put that in my calculator if you need to, and we get, again, 100. So we know that they're both going to be spinning for the same amount of time. Okay? All right, moving on. So now we are talking about frequency. Frequency is the amount of times an object has cycled within a given uh, time period. RPM, so for example, if you drive or you notice this when you are driving in somebody else's car, RPM stands for revolutions per minute. In this case of a car, it's the amount of time the engine's crankshafts makes a full rotation in one minute. So, okay, so let's look at this. Frequency is the number of cycles divided by time. Okay, so kind of similar to period, but it's a little bit different. So frequency is equal to the number of cycles divided by time. So let's say something spin, like let's say you're spinning a yo-yo really fast. Um, the frequency would be, let's say if it goes five times, you spin it five times in one second, the frequency would be equal to five or five hertz. Okay. So here's the formulas and the manipulated formulas here. Another thing to know is period and frequency are inverse of each other. So if we uh, put the inverse, we could also find the period. And if we find the inverse of the frequency, we could find the period as well. Okay, so frequency is uh, often measured in hertz. How many times an object cycles in one second? 
Okay, so let's look at some examples. An engine's crankshaft rotates 80 times in two seconds. What is the frequency of its motion? So again, the frequency is how many times it rotates or cycles in that given time period. So for A, your frequency is equal to the number of times divided by the time. So this would be 80 times in two seconds. So it would be equal to 40 hertz. So what exactly does this mean, 40 hertz? This means in one second, the crankshaft have rotated 40 times. Okay, what is the period? So we could do this in different kinds of ways. We can say the period um, is equal to, what, what did we have before? So period is equal to the time divided by the number of cycles. So we, as we can see that before, oops, time divided by the number of cycles. So we could do time is equal to two seconds. Number of cycles is 80. So then we have two divided by 80, and that is equal to 0 0.025 seconds. Another way we could figure, and that's correct, but another way we could have figured that out is, since we know frequency is equal to 40 hertz, and we should know the inverse is, uh, the period is the inverse of that, we could do period is equal to 1 divided by 40. And that will give the same answer, 0 0.025 Okay. okay, now let's look at this. The blade of a saw has a frequency of 200 hertz. Okay, so again, what does that mean, a frequency of 200 hertz? That means in one second, this blade would have rotated 200 times. Okay, so in one second, this blade would have rotated 200 times. How long will it take for the saw to rotate 50 times? Okay, so for looking back here, so we're looking for how long it's going to take to rotate 50 times. So we can kind of use this formula here. If you memorized it, or we can just kind of uh, use the algebra algebraic manipulation. So we know frequency is equal to the number of times divided by the time. If we're looking for how long it'll take, we're looking for it. We can manipulate this to do time is equal to number of cycles divided by frequency. So I can say time is equal to the number of times, which is 50, divided by the frequency, which is 200. And then so I do 50 divided by 200, and I get 0 0.25 seconds. Okay, part B. How long will it take the saw to rotate one time? Um, so that's what this definition is. It's going to take, if the frequency is 200 hertz, how long will it take to rotate one time? Oh, okay. Then we can do time is equal to rotating one time divided by uh, 200 and then this time is going to be equal to I'm going to divide by 200 0 0.005 seconds also when it asks how long will it take to rotate the saw one time that is the period so that's what you can do as well you can do period is equal to uh, the time, oh, I guess it doesn't say what the time is, uh, divided by the number of cycles. But anyway, it's the same thing. Okay. All right. Uh, so you could have also found the inverse of the frequency. One divided by period. And then, oops. Sorry. You could have done period is equal to one divided by the frequency. So one divided by 200. And that would equal the same thing, 0 0.005 seconds. Sorry if I confused people with that. All right, moving on. Okay, so let's look at example number six. A grinding wheel has a frequency of 55 hertz. Again, let's try to understand what that means. That means this wheel is rotating. And the time it takes for it to rotate in one second, it'll rotate 55 times. Okay, so in one second, this grinding wheel will have, will have rotated 50 times, 55 times. Okay. Okay, so A, in 10 seconds, how many rotations does it make? So again, we know that frequency is equal to well, let's look back, the number of times it rotates divided by the time it takes. But this time, we're looking at how many rotations. 
So now we just kind of do some algebraic manipulation. Number of rotations is equal to the frequency times the time. Okay. So now let's plug that in. The frequency is 55. Uh, the time is 10 seconds. And this is going to be equal to 550. Uh, oops, not 550 seconds. 550 times. Part B, how long would it take for the grinding wheel to rotate one time? Again, this is the period. How long it takes to rotate one time is the period. So I know the period is equal to 1 over frequency. Anyway, we could do this a different way, but this is how I'm going to do it this time. 1 over frequency, and frequency is 55. So let me do that. 1 divided by 55, and we have 0 0.018. Okay, uh, all right, moving on. Object one has a frequency of 100 hertz. Object two has a frequency of 50 hertz. Which object is cycling at a quicker rate? So let's kind of think about what this means. So this means this is going 100 times or spinning 100 times or cycling 100 times or rotating 100 times in one second. This one is rotating, cycling, or spinning 50 times in one second. So which object is cycling at a quicker rate? Object number one. Okay, it rotates 100 times in one second, while object two is only rotating 50 times in one second. Okay, so let's look at this example. Merry-go-round is rotating with a frequency of 0 0.05 hertz. How will the period of its motion change if the merry-go-round spins for five minutes instead of two minutes? The period will be longer for five minutes. The period will be longer for two minutes. The period will be the same for both. So one thing to know here, let's try to understand this. It says the frequency is 0 0.05 for this merry round. So that means in one second, it doesn't go all the way around. It actually doesn't go very far in one second. So you might be thinking, okay, uh, the period will probably be more in five minutes than in two minutes. However, remember, frequency is equal to one over period. Uh, so that means the period would be equal to 1 over frequency, so 1 divided by 0 0.05. So period would be equal to 1 divided by 0 0.05. So that would be 20 seconds. So what does this mean? This means it takes this merry-go-round 20 seconds to go all the way around. So let's think about that now. How will the period of its motion change if the merry-go-round spins for 5 minutes instead of 2 minutes? The period will be longer for five minutes, the period will be longer for two minutes, the period will be the same for both. So we should know that the period is going to be the same. Yes, it's going to go around more times in five minutes than in two minutes, but the period, how long it takes to make a full circle, which is 20 seconds, is going to be the same for both. I know a little tricky, but hopefully it makes sense. All right, moving on. A grinding wheel is turned on and set to its first setting and starts to rotate with a frequency of 50 hertz. It's flipped to its second setting and starts to rotate with a frequency of 80 hertz. If it was on both settings for one minute, in which setting did the wheel rotate more? Okay, so setting number one, 50 hertz. Setting number two, 50 hertz. Setting number two, 80 hertz. Again, we should know what this means is rotates 50 times in one second. Well, this means rotates 80 times in one second. So if they're both set for one minute, in which setting would the, uh, did the wheel rotate more? That's going to be setting number two. All right, so that's everything with period and frequency. I hope that was helpful. Next time, I'm going to talk about tangential velocity. Thanks for watching. Bye.